Hi everybody, welcome back to my channel. Um, so today I'm gonna do a video that I'm actually really excited about doing. I've been wanting to do one for a while and it's gonna be some favorites that I've recently tried and some fails. So this is gonna be products that I've tried since the beginning of 2020. I've tried a lot of stuff and I've really liked a lot of stuff and I haven't been filming as much so a lot of it I haven't even used on my channel, so I thought I would just combine it all into one big video. Now I'll tell you, my favorites pile is twice as big as my fails pile. So um, I'm going to do a couple of favorites and then a fail and a couple of favorites and a fail. None of these products are in a specific order, I just have them sitting out here on my vanity. And now let's jump right into the video. So. I am going to start with two brushes. They're from Alamar Cosmetics. I got them in BoxyCharm. One is a favorite and one is a fail. Can you guess which one? So my favorite is actually this one. It is the bronzer brush. It is domed, but has these little like textured things in it. It fits so perfect and it just blends out the most beautiful bronzer. I have not found a bronzer brush that I have ever liked besides this one, the Morphe R14. All of them have just been like, okay, but this one really blends out everything perfect and it fits in the hollow of my cheek perfect. And this one, it just brings me the same vibes. It's so great for like contouring. I really enjoy this brush. That being said, that means that this Alomar brightening brush is a fail for me. I don't hate it, but I don't understand it because it does not work for highlighter. It's super dense. Like you can put a highlighter here with it, but then it's like a block of highlighter. It's way too dense. My highlighter brush that I really, really enjoy is this Morphe R36. And I don't see how I'm like ever gonna like anything more. It just puts the right amount of highlighter down. It's perfect every single time. You never have to worry about it. This, as beautiful as it is, it's too dense. It's domed the wrong way. And it just isn't good for anything. I tried using it to like pack under the under eye, but it didn't place the powder the right way. So maybe I'll come up with something for this brush in the future. But as of right now, I'm not really a fan. So another favorite for me so far in 2020 is this Hourglass Blush. This is the Hourglass Ambient Lighting Blush Illuminator in Diffused Heat. Look how pretty that is. It is is stunning so it has all of this really pretty pigment mixed with this luminosity so this is what it looks like swatched you can't really tell because i'm a pretty pink person um but it has just a little bit of like luminosity and glitter with um this really light pretty pink hue so um i'm gonna go in with this alamar blush brush which is also one of my new favorite things and show you See how it just adds like a light pink, pretty hue, but with the most beautiful luminosity. Such a fan. Um, so this is definitely a favorite. Next is another favorite. And this is a favorite for most people, but I just tried it for the first time recently. It's the Tatcha Silk Canvas. Now this is such an expensive primer. I would have never gotten it for myself but my lovely friend Devin had two of them and she gave me one and I've never had anything so bougie on my skin before, but I love it. Look how much I've used already. Thank you so much, Devin. I can't get over this primer. It's so good. Um, I try not to use it too much because I know I'm not gonna repurchase it after I use this, but it's so nice and it smells so good and it feels so good on the skin. So, this is definitely a win, and I know most people already knew that, but I didn't, so here we go. Let's go ahead and do a fail, and this fail um, is sad to me because it's a tinted brow gel from Mellow, and I really, really like the actual brow gel. Like, I really enjoy tinted brow gels. Um, I actually have it in my eyebrows right now because um, some days I just don't feel like doing my brows. And it's nice because I have thick brows that I can just tint them and go. The reason this is a fail for me is look at the brush. It's so annoying because it's so thick and hard and like it doesn't mold at all. And it has like these really big 
lumps on the end. And so when you put it through your brows, it goes everywhere. It's so messy. You cannot get a precise brow with this at all to save your life. Um, so I put it in and then I have to take another spoolie and spoolie it through. And then I have to take a wipey and like wipe off all the excess. It's such a pain in the butt. I will definitely not repurchase. I didn't purchase it to begin with. I was gifted this for my cousin and I use it all the time. Don't get me wrong, but I don't really care for it because it's a pain in the butt to use, but I use it because I need it. So confusing. Of course it is, but that's how I feel. Next is a win, and this is the Morphe Clear Brow Gel. Now, I love this brow gel so much. It is the complete opposite of that tinted brow gel. I wish it was tinted. Morphe, please. Tinted brow gel, please. So, this is what it looks like. The brush is so soft. It's so soft. It is just the perfect thing to put in the brow. You can just go right through. doesn't mess anything up. The hair stays put. I can tell you for like 14 hours, the hairs just do not move. Um, and I really appreciate that because if I use a brow pencil or something, I'll swoop this through my brows and they'll stay put because I do have a lot of hairs. Like I said, all I use is was a tinted brow gel today and like, yeah, they're tiny bit sparse and like more than my usual, but they're still beautiful. Like there's nothing wrong with it. All right, so let's go for another um, favorite. And I'm gonna do two favorites at one time here. The Pretty Fresh Line by ColourPop. I have, this is the Hyaluronic Acid Tinted Moisturizer, and I believe it's in L5, yeah. It's, um, sorry, it's in Light 5N. And then this is their concealer, and it's in Light 40N. These are gorgeous. It's what I'm wearing today, so it's a nice tinted moisturizer. You can still see my normal skin through it a little bit, but it provides a, a decent amount of like coverage, um, which I really appreciate. I wear it every day when I go to work, so I've even been wearing it on my days off. And then this concealer is really full coverage, and it covers the dark circles really well. I mean, this is after 14 hours and after having purple eyeshadow all over it from fallout. I didn't even try to fix it. Um, and it still looks so pretty. This concealer, I don't know if I'll ever need another concealer. It's totally changed because I will never use the no filter concealer again. Like I'm never gonna repurchase it. The ones I have I'll use, but I'm never gonna repurchase it. And this tinted moisturizer has really been a game changer. Look at this. I got this in January and I've used so much. You can even start to see where I've come through. And that being said, I've had it for two months and I still have it and I use it almost every day. So the amount of product you get in here for like, I don't know, like $13 or something like that. Outstanding. Same with this. I use this every single day and you can't even tell that there's like any missing like it's still completely coating the bottle. It's awesome. And the doe foot applicator is perfect. It's like one swipe coverage. Can't, can't say enough nice things about this. All right. So let's go into a fail. The Becca ultimate coverage, 24 hour foundation. Got this in BoxyCharm. It's in shade cashmere. It's a really pretty shade. It's actually like not the worst foundation in the world. The problem is, is you cannot wear it on its own. Like you put, you can do your primer, your moisturizer, all that stuff. But if you put this, it's just like cake, 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 cake. Like you're spackling your skin. And then it looks like it. You see every line, every imperfection. That's not what I'm looking for. To use this, I have to add um, a second, um, I have to add a second foundation to it to thin it out because it's so thick. Look at this. Look at, you see that? Look how thick that is. And then look, look at that. So it's so incredibly thick, even for a full coverage foundation, trying to blend that out. Look at that. Imagine what that's going to do to your skin on your face. So I have this, I have to add a different foundation to it, which is also in one of my fails, but together they actually make something kind of decent, but you can still kind of see the creasing. Like you have to heavy set every part of your face, not just your under eye. 
and um, I'll even add like luminosity drops to it to try to make it a little better. But like I shouldn't have to add two products and heavily moisturize, heavily exfoliate, and heavily prime for this to work. That's why it's a fail for me. I'm gonna keep it. I may use it, you know, every once in a while for like a special occasion or something. Um, but I really, I don't really care for it. Um, so let's go into something I do care for next. This has been my new Holy Grail setting powder. This is the Morphe uh, translucent bake and set. It is so cheap. I think it's like $12 or something. And I've had it for over a month and it's like halfway full and I bake under my eye every day. Sometimes I bake here and then sometimes I'll light set with it too. So like I've been using it a lot and it's so nice. No flashback, good price, nice finely milled powder. Really, really enjoy this powder. Um, it's, it's so good. Can't say enough nice things about this. Okay. So next we're going to do another fail. And this you guys will remember from one of my videos. If you watched it, this is the photo focus foundation in dewy. So this is super light coverage. It's nothing like its counterpart, the matte. Um, this is actually what I use to add to the Becca foundation to thin it out because it's really just like a meh foundation. So I like, I don't mind wasting it by mixing it with the Becca. I use like two parts photo focus to one part Becca and it thins it out enough to like actually apply it to the skin in like a decent way. Um, so together they're okay. This by itself is kind of a fail. It really doesn't cover anything. It's not even really that dewy. It's nothing, there's nothing um, exciting about it. I'm definitely going to keep with my normal photo focus. You know, that's like my ride or die foundation. Um, it's really meh. Um, so next is going to be a favorite and a fail together. They're the same item, two different companies. So I have recently found the biggest love for magnetic lashes. I have such a hard time putting on, um, falsies. They really bother me. I think it's my eye shape. If you notice, they're always like starting to lift right here. It really bothers me. So I have two, actually I have three brands here. I'm going to start with the Fail, and that's the Ilore London. This is what the lash looks like. It's not the worst lash in the world. It's actually kind of mimics this um, Lily lash I have on. But the eyeliner, it's a magnetic eyeliner, which is what I've been using for all three brands. So nice. I love the magnetic eyeliner idea. The problem I have is that you have to put one coat let it dry, put another coat, let it dry, and then put a third coat, let it dry. So even though it's liquid and I am a rock star with liquid liner, it's always going to be thick. How do you put three coats of liner and not make it thick? That's the problem with every woman in America's wings. After you keep trying to fix it, it ends up being an Amy Winehouse. Same problem. So I am not a fan of this liner because even after you've used three coats, it really doesn't stick that well. I actually wore this to, um, I think it was to my, it was to my husband's birthday. I put this on, I made a decent eye look with this and the magnets on the back of this one, there's four and it started lifting on the inner. And I was like, what the heck? Like I put the three coats and I let it dry and I did everything. So that was kind of annoying. So the magnets on these eyelashes are not that strong, but here's, see they work. I will say they work. You can see where the magnets are sticking, even upside down. There we go. My little hand eyelash. So that is a fail for me just because they don't sit right and I really hate the liner. Next is the Ardell. This is the eyeliner that I love. I don't like gel eyeliners. I'm not the best at gel eyeliners, but this magnetic eyeliner is so good. You can see like I've really gone into it. I don't know if it's just so much stronger and that's why I like it. Like it has more iron in it. Now this brush from Ardell, totally a fail. It's good for nothing. 
but I'm just gonna put a line next to my eye lower. So this is Ardell, this is Ilore. So this is already a, a darker color, which is really nice. Now this brush is crap, so that's why it's not a thin line. Now this liner, you only have to put one coat. It's very strong. Um, I think it has more iron in it. And then these are the two lashes I have. So this bottom one is Ardell, top one is Kiss. So both lashes are just so pretty. They stick really well. The Kiss actually has five magnets, which is so nice because it's not going to lift. The Ardells have four magnets. And what I will say is after cleaning them once, a magnet popped off each lash. So I'm not really excited about that because they're kind of expensive for that to be happening. Um, here's the Ardell. Look how pretty that is. So pretty and they look so natural and I'm really a fan of that. And this little carrying case from Kiss is magnetic. So I really like that because the lashes aren't gonna move around. So that is a new win for me. Now, last but not least, my last product of the entire video is a win. And this is the Natasha Denona Cheek Palette. Now I have never had anything Natasha Denona before. I've never been that fancy, but I fell in love with this when I was in Sephora. I had a 15% off coupon and I had a return from Christmas. So I was like, I'm not even paying for this. It's gonna be free. I'm gonna buy it even though it's totally irresponsible because it's a $45 cheek palette once I had the coupon. It's so pretty. I love it. So what I have found is that this cream blush right here, I'm not a cream blush person, but I have found a love for it because I use it. Here's, this is the cream blush. I use it when I have put down my foundation. I go in with a rounded kabuki and I just tap it in the cream blush and tap it on my skin. And then I set that cream blush with a regular blush, like my new Hourglass, or I'll use this one, which is called a Super Glow. Gosh, these are so freaking pretty. So that's what the Super Glow looks like. See it? OMG, it's so beautiful. Next um, is their highlight. It's like a gold, a really pretty golden highlight. Right there. You see it right there. Oh, yes. Oh, yep. There we go. Right in the light. So pretty. And I'll have to tell you, as weird as this is, this diamond powder glitter shade is probably my favorite thing of the whole palette. It's very soft and it is a pink and gold glitter. Like straight up, I adore it. It's just, oh my goodness. It's so pretty. Like, I don't even know if you could see that on camera, but I can see it in person and it's so pretty. I just love it so much. It's definitely a win. I don't know if I'm gonna use it all the time. I have used all of these colors on my face at the same time. It looked a little crazy. I went a little crazy with that blush. That's the problem but it's definitely a win and I'm going to keep using it and I'm going to keep loving it. So I hope you enjoyed this video of like my favorites and fails in 2020 so far. I'll try to do these more periodically because I really enjoy talking about the products I like and what worked for me and what didn't. Um, that doesn't mean these products aren't going to work for you. Um, but maybe it'll help you decide when I have something like two different magnetic lashes and one worked for me and one didn't. Um, so I hope you enjoyed this video. I really hope you'd consider subscribing to my channel. Um, and let me know in a comment below if something that worked for me worked for you or vice versa. Um, I'd be really interested in seeing what other people think about these products. Thank you so much for watching my channel um, and for watching this video. I hope you have an amazing night. Thank you so much. Bye.